For Al Gore, words are one thing, lies. He premeditatedly is making all this money off of this. George Soros is openly funding it. They're saying it's like Holocaust denial. They're talking about in the emails how to persecute people, how to block their papers from being published, which destroys scientists. I mean, the, the civil lawsuits should be immediately filed by the people that have been harmed. This is racketeering. It's powerful institutions and governments in the emails getting together to block FOIA requests so the documents being requested wouldn't be released because scientists were going, well, your data doesn't match up to what these weather stations said it was. Shut up. We're not going to release it. You're funded by the oil companies. When it's actually a lot of big oil companies financing this, Dutch World Shell, BP, all these big money interests are actually behind this. Dr. Tim Ball, uh, I want to get more into the science and whatever issues you want to cover because you're the brain on this. But I specifically want you to talk about justice and also by bringing these people to justice, by suing them, by criminal charges. But government is behind this, so they probably won't. We will then further force this out into the open and start getting really aggressive with these people that want to tax us and control us and run our lives. Dr. Tim Ball. Yeah, well, I, I couldn't agree more. And by the way, in a, in a recent Newsweek uh, story, Al Gore said facts are not enough. Well, sorry, <laughs> Al, the facts are enough, and and they're not in your favor. But John Coleman, who is, was re, was the founder of the Weather Channel, there was a rumor around that he was going to bring a lawsuit against Gore, um, and it, it would would parallel what you've just been talking about uh, on, on a charge of fraud. Um, and he the uh, the grounds was that here Gore had gone out and said that CO2 um, and, car and carbon, as it's incorrectly called, is, is a serious problem and um, that uh, we've got to get rid of it, we've got to deal with it. And um, he then turned around and, of course, um, set up the sale of carbon credits. Um, and therefore, that constitutes fraud because you, you falsely create the problem and then profit from it. And... Um, uh, Gore uh, was involved in this, and by the way, Gore's been involved in not just the climate thing, but um, you go back to the Club of Rome and the population overpopulation issues, and he chaired the 1994 uh, conference in Cairo on it. But um, the 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 whole um, uh, Gore issue of of, of making profit uh, in 1998, there was a conference or a meeting, I should say, in the White House with uh, Bill Clinton. Al Gore, Lord Brown of British Petroleum, and of course you see them um Publish, putting out ads um, and, and so on, and then the other, the fourth person was Ken Lay of Enron, and what they were what they were discussing was how to uh, keep the carbon credits uh, market going, because the carbon credits idea came out of um, uh, an attempt to get the U.S. to sign the Kyoto Treaty, and the U.S. said, oh, well, what, what are you going to give us? And they said, well, we'll, we'll what, they said, what do you want? We said, well, we want some carbon credits for the stuff we're taking out of the air. And the Europeans said no. But anyway, Gore kept that going. So Gore profited. Now, I think that um, you could argue that these people, not only the, the deliberate uh, falsification of records, which I would think in itself is criminal, but, but also the fact that they use their uh, data to get huge amounts of government funding. And, and so to falsify applications for government funding, I would think, would, would also be criminal. I mean, the Jones, for example, I think it's $21.6 million alone. And uh, when you look at the U.S., um, an estimated $70 billion a year going into climate research. In Canada, Environment Canada spent $6.8 billion in five years on climate change research, that, and all of that went to funding. Well, that's so, a key I, point. Let me throw in this piece of evidence. The London Guardian two days ago, had this headline, in fact, let's pull it up, uh, where the U.N. calls for global policing of technology and these select committees will decide what technologies are even allowed, what old technologies will be banned or taxed, and then what new technologies will be funded by government. And then we see Al Gore already making hundreds of millions a year just off government grants to little green technology that's in quotes companies that he owns or owns a part of. I mean, this is a total hijacking of the economy by these people. There it is. Global body needed to direct green technology. G77 says, London Guardian, developed nations call for UN body to police battle on climate change. I mean, these guys, 
it's not just the carbon credits or the carbon taxes. It's taxes on beef, televisions, asphalt, more than one child, uh, just literally water. I mean, they're announcing people think they're under taxes now. Notice right as the banks implode the economy, the very same banks are now financing the, the green takeover. It's not green. It is neo-feudalism. Yeah, and let me let me uh, just. Uh, it, it sounds like a small example, but it's it, it's a perfect illustration of what you're talking about, Alex. I was just in Alberta at five different farm communities because I've been working with the farmers. They're the ones most directly affected by weather and climate, and and. Um, Prior to my presentation, and I, it was sort of a dog and pony show, but there was a company selling carbon credits to the farmers. And you say, okay, fine, there's a business opportunity and, and you guys are taking advantage of it. That's the, that's the way the free market uh, works. And the government have created this opportunity by what they're doing with carbon tax and so on. But when, when the farmers started to hear from this private company, because one of the farmers said, well, if I, if I tell you that I'm planting this crop or I'm doing that in order to get um, to sell carbon credits, how are you going to know that I'm being honest about it? Well, the guy just said, well, hang on a minute. He said, first of all, we've got, a, we've got data on every single farm in Western Canada. He said, we know the precise size of your farm. We know the acreage. We know what you planted. We've got access to land titles. We've got access to your, to your, uh, uh, your whole b b budget and funding of your farm. And um, and then one farmer popped up and he said, well, you know, I, I took uh, some of the government money because I'm in forage crops. And they said, oh, you could reduce methane and you, if you take this money. The next thing he knew, there was a government agent on his farm telling him how, what he could grow and, and, and his crop rotation. So we've already got illustrations of, of the degree to which this uh, in, infiltrates down to the individual and the individual. Let me stop you again, though, and ask you this yeah. question, because you're yeah. so knowledgeable on all these subjects. You've been in it for decades. Dealing with this, we see the NFL, we see Hollywood, we see News Corp, we see almost every major Fortune 500 company, the oil companies, the banks, all behind this. Green propaganda everywhere, electric cars, windmills, things that sound great, advancement. They have a sugar coating on this takeover of things that sound reasonable, but that's all just window dressing. They're not going to stop now because we've caught them in all this fraud. They're going to continue because the entire power structure has admitted that this is the main funding mechanism and regulatory global control for world government as Maury Strong and Al Gore and uh, the he new head of the UN, uh, the new uh, Ban Ki Moon, the new head of the yeah. EU, Von Rumpy, they admit this is the key to their whole world government. They hadn't expected us to be this effective. They thought they'd just call us Holocaust deniers. You know, if you call yeah. Obama a socialist, you hate black people, it has nothing to do with it. This isn't working anymore. So knowing them, what do you expect them to do? Go to some new crisis? You know, they're now saying the oceans are going to turn into acid. I mean, are they going to say that, 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 I mean, what's their new fraud going to be? And how do you see them countering this? Well, of course, one of the arguments that's coming back is that, um, well, okay, these guys cook the data, but there's still enough evidence out there that uh, global warming is occurring and that the CO2 is increasing. In fact, uh, there was a report um, uh, from a government agency uh, just the other, uh, day before yesterday saying, oh, look, CO2 levels are continuing to rise. Well, yes, so what? Um, the fact is that what caused them to shift from talking about global warming to climate change was that from 2002, on, the temperature started to go down, but the CO2 continued to rise. And we know from the science there is no connection between CO2 and temperature. And, and one of the things that's happened in the science community here, Alex, is they've completely hijacked the scientific method. Because what happens is that a scientist comes up with a theory which is based on certain assumptions, and then other scientists will challenge that. Notice that it's still Einstein's theory of relativity after a hundred in seven years. It's still Darwin's theory of, of uh, evolution after 150 years because there's other scientists have a lot of questions that 
just don't fit. But what happened with the what's called the anthropogenic global warming theory was it became a fact almost instantly. And Richard Lindzen at MIT, who's also been in the forefront and, and of both the, the, the charge and the uh, insult and, and getting the insults, he said uh, uh, a long time ago the consensus was reached before the research was even begun. Now, with Einstein as an example, one of the assumptions that his formula is based on is that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. Well, there are scientists that are saying, look, we're finding things going faster than the speed of light. If that turns out to be true, then Einstein's theory has either got to be rewritten or thrown out. Well, with the anthropogenic global warming, the fundamental assumption is that if CO2 increases in the atmosphere, the temperature will go up. In every single record that we've got for any duration of any time period, the temperature increases before the CO2, not as they assume. And by the way, that assumption is built into their computer models, which is why they are consistently wrong.